Hi, this is Ross Shane from Imagineer Systems. Effects artists know that one of the core areas of visual effects is having good clean plates. Today we're going to use Moki's removal tools to remove the foreground element here and generate a new clean plate. We're going to start here in Moki, and we're going to bring up the new project wizard. And navigate and import these sequential files. In the new project wizard is where I can name the project and direct the path to save the project and the render files. Moki defaults to rendering out sequential files to a folder called results. I don't need to cache the clip because my clips live locally. Here I can confirm how many frames I'm bringing in as well as the frames per second the Moki project is. Now let's get into some planar tracking to solve the motion of the camera. We'll start with the X-spline tool and make a couple points and right click to close. Let's use the Add Contour to Layer button. What this is going to allow me to do is add multiple shape search areas to track more information than just my first shape. Again, the Add Contour to Layer button is an important technique to solve difficult tracks. And here I'm going to show you a really cool feature about Moki's Planar Tracker. What we can do is unlink the splines from the track, go into the Track tab, and start tracking forwards. What you'll notice is that the search areas are staying static. They're staying in the same places as the camera moves around and generating offset tracking data. This is a great technique to remember if you're ever tracking shots that go off screen or have long pans and your object keeps going off screen. Our goal here is to create rock solid tracking data for the background. Once we have a solid background track, we're going to use Moki's removal tools. Moki has the ability to analyze the difference between the foreground and the background elements and automatically remove based on the difference. Well, the background's now tracked, and if we scroll through here, it looks kind of funny because still the shapes haven't really been updating. Let's turn on the Layers surface and go to the Layers tab and select Align Surface. What this does is aligns our track surface to full frame. Now we can play our shot and double check that we have good tracking data. We can even adjust the surface and use it as a reference. We can turn on the grid and double check that we have rock solid tracking data. And just to check, we can reposition the surface and the grid. Everything we tracked was on the same relative plane, so we should be good to go. Now let's turn off the grid and realign the surface back to full frame. Still in the Layers tab, let's give this layer a name, and we'll call it Background Track. Next, we need to identify the foreground element. In this case, it's the lobster. We're going to use our X-spline tool and create another rotospline. This will just be a loose mask. We'll go ahead and name this Lobster Garbage Mask. What we need to do now is create a basic garbage mask around the lobster and his shadow. Rather boring you, I'm just going to quickly speed this up and show you how in a couple of seconds I just added a couple of quick keyframes. Moki defaults to auto keyframe mode, so it's quite easy just to navigate on my timeline, add a couple quick changes, and have the shape in between between the keyframes. To use Moki successfully for removals, you do need to understand the layering system. Basically, objects that are closer to the camera should be closer to you in the layer priority. Next, I'm going to select my background track and turn on the Modify Range button in the keyframe controls. In the Layers tab, let's switch this layer off because we're really not going to use it right now. Instead, I'm going to use our x tool to create a new layer. What this layer is going to do is basically be the layer that Moki uses to analyze all the clean areas of the frame. going to take this new layer and link it to our background track that we already have. We'll go ahead and name that linked background track. Now you can see that this new layer is using our original tracking data. 
and we can make sure that this tracked layer covers the entire frame or all the areas where we might think that the foreground element is actually within the background a clean area. Just scrubbing through the shot. Z to zoom and X to pan. Adding a couple keyframes to the shape. Again, the shape is actually linked to our original background track data. And I do have the modify range button on, which is similar to the Uber key found in Mocha and Motor. Whenever you do a removal, you want your, the removal layer to be at the top or closest to the camera. With the lobster mask layer selected, we're gonna go into our remove tab and hit the process forward button. And here's where the magic happens. So what Moki is doing in its removal process is more than just a simple clone offset. It's analyzing the background and the foreground track elements and finding where these clean areas exist in different parts of the frame from the background. This is extremely useful for removing things from shots, things like scratches, rig removals, unwanted objects from shots. And while most VFX artists have lots of tools and techniques to deal with this kind of shot, what Moki represents is huge time savings. Now let's just play the shot back and we can quickly toggle between the original shot and the new clean plate with the lobster extracted. And now to wrap up this quick video tutorial, we're back in After Effects. I do want to remind you that when we're rendering in Moki, we're automatically creating sequential files. And these are all going to be found in this results folder. Here's the original lobster shot on the bottom layer, the clean plate above it with the fade to fade on, and here's the final composite, thanks to Trap Code Particular for the explosion. While this is not the most sophisticated composite, I hope you can see the power of Moki in using Moki to generate clean plates. And be assured, no lobsters were hurt in the making of this tutorial. We'd like to thank Digital Juice for providing this clip from their Videotracks HD library. And for Imagineer Systems, this is Ross Shane.